So this week we're talking about pulmonary system. Um, this is Chantel Manhart with Northern Illinois. Um, chapter 26, Structure and Function of the Pulmonary System. So the structures of the pulmonary system include the conducting airways, or the upper airways, which is the nasopharyngeal airway, um, laryngeal-tracheal airway, and the tracheobronchial tree. The conducting airways move air into the lungs, warm and humidify the air, and trap inhaled particles. The conducting airways um, termin terminate in the respiratory bronchioles, um, alveolar ducts, and alveoli. These thin-walled structures together are sometimes called the asinus, and they all participate in gas exchange. The alveoli are the primary gas exchange units of the lungs where oxygen enters and the blood and carbon dioxide is removed. Lung epithelial cells provide a productive interface with the environment. and are essential for adequate gas exchange, preventing entry of foreign agents regarding ion and water transportation and maintain mechanical stability of the al alveoli. The two types of the epithelial cells are surfactant, which coats um, the inner surface of the alveolus and lowers alveoli, alveolar surface um, tension, which prevents lung collapse. The pleura is a thin double layer serous membrane that lines the thoracic cavity and encases the lungs. Um, this is just a good picture to show you the upper and lower respiratory tracts um, are illustrated here and the enlargement of the circle depicts the sinus where the oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged. So the pulmonary function is used for ventilation, mechanical movement of gas, or air in and out of the lungs. Minute volume is the amount of the effect of ventilation is calculated by multiplying the ventil ventilatory rate by volume or amount of breath. Alveolar ventilation, gas transportation, the delivery of oxygen to the cells of the body and removal of carbon dioxide. Um, it maintains an even distribution of gas ventilation and blood perfusion to all portions of the lung. Um, it's blood storage, and its regulation of vasoconstriction substances such as bradykinin and angiotensin II. We'll talk to you about each of these. So the pressure inside the lung and the alveoli of the lung is called the intrapapillary pressure or the alveolar pressure. The gases in this area of the lung are, communicate, are in communication with the atmospheric pressure. When the glottis is open and the air is not moving in or out of the lung as is occurring just before inspiration or expiration. The, intrapap the intrapulmonary pressure is zero or equal to atmospheric pressure. The pressure in the pleural cavity is called the intrapleural pressure. The intrapleural pressure is always negative in relationship to the alveolar pressure. Approximately four mmHg between breaths when the glottis is open and the alveolar space are open to the atmosphere. Without the negative intrapleural pressure holding the lungs against the chest wall, their, elasticity, their elastic recoil properties would cause them to collapse. Although the intrapleural pressure, pressure is negative in relationship to alveolar pressure, it may become positive in relationship to atmospheric pressure during forced expiration like a cough. The intrathoracic pressure is the pressure in the thoracic cavity. It is essentially equal to the intrapleural pressure and is the pressure to which the lungs, heart, and great vessels are exposed. We then have our major muscles of inspiration that we use. 
such as the diaphragm, the intercostals. Um, accessory muscles of inspiration include the sternal um, cleine mastoid muscle, the squeens muscles, accessor, accessory muscles of the and expiration are no muscle, no major muscles of expiration normally are passive, but we have abdominal muscles and inter, inter, intra, internal intercostal muscles. So gas exchange and transport. So oxygen from the alveolar diffuses across the alveolar capillary membrane into the blood and carbon dioxide from the blood diffuse into the alveoli. Alveolar ventriculate ventilation cannot be accurately determined by observing observation of an ventilatory rate, pattern, or effort. If a healthcare professional needs to determine the adequacy of ventilation, or arterial an arterial blood gas analysis must be performed to measure PaCO2. Um, so blood gas transportation has four steps. Um, the first one is ventilation of the lungs. Two is diffusion of oxygen from the alveolar into the capillary blood. Three is perfusion of the systemic capillaries with oxygenated blood, and four is diffusion of oxygen from systemic capillaries into the cells. Steps in transportation of carbon dioxide is diffusion of the carbon dioxide from the cells into the systemic capillaries. Um, two is perfusion of the pulmonary capillary bed to the venous blood, and three is diffusion of the carbon dioxide into the alveolar, and four is removal of carbon dioxide from the lung to the ventilation. Any part of this can be compromised by a respiratory or a cardiac disorder. Ventilation is a mechanical event. Um, the degree to which the lungs inflate and deflate depends on the respiratory pressures, inflating the lungs, compliance of the lungs, and airway resistance. This is all affected by position, volume, and disease. The heart pumps against gravity to perfuse the pulmonary circulation. As blood is pumped into the lungs, into the lung apexic of um, a city or sane individual, some blood pressure is dissipated to overcome gravity. As a result, blood pressure of the paces is lower than that of the bases. Because greater pressure causes greater perfusion, the bases of the lungs are better perfused than the paces. The apex. Um, this happens no matter what the position we are in. There are two types of um, shunting then. There's physiologic shunting um, there's a mismatch um, a ventilation perfusion resulting in insufficient ventilation to provide oxygen needs to the oxygenated blood flow. Um, and then there's alveolar and through the alveolar capillaries. Automatic shunting is blood moves from the venous to the arterial side of the circulation without moving through the lungs. This is due to most time congenital heart anomalies. So, okay, we, this just depicts alveolar bronchial subdivided to form teeny tubulars called alveolar ducts, which end in clusters of alveoli called alveolar sacs. So, we're talking about gas transportation, the distribution, ventilation, and perfusion 
So we are going to talk about gravity of the alveolar pressure ventilation perfusion ratio, how oxygen transportation takes place, and then carbon dioxide. The gas exchange properties of the lungs depends on matching the ventilation perfusion. This ensuring that equal amounts of air or blood are entering the respiratory portion of the lungs. The lungs um, enable air to come in contact with the blood through flowing through the pulmonary capillaries so that exchange of the gases between the external environment and the internal environment of the blood can take place. The lungs restore the oxygen content of the arterial blood and remove oxygen dioxide from the venous blood. The blood carries oxygen carbon dioxide in the di dissolved state and in combination with hemoglobin. Carbon dioxide also is the amount of gas that can be dissolved in plasma is determined by two factors, the solubility of the gas in the plasma and the partial pressure of the gas in the al alveoli. Oxygen and carbon dioxide dissolve in plasma. The gases that are um, dissolved in plasma are similar to the carbon dioxide that is dissolved in a cap bottle of carbonated drink. In the case of carbonated drink, the gas is dissolved under increased pressure, which allows more gas to be dissolved. Um, so when the bottle cap is removed, the pressure is reduced and lets less gas remain um, in the dissolved state. Teeny bubbles form as the gas removes from the dissolved to the gaseous state. In the clinical um, section or setting, blood gas measurements are used to determine the letter, um, determine the level of the partial pressure of oxygen of PO2 and carbon dioxide of PCO2 in the blood. Arterial blood is used for the blood sputum, or blood gases. Carbon, carbonic acid is formed when carbon dioxide combines with water. The process is expelled by an enzyme called carbonic um, amhydrase. Um, this, is this, is, this is hemoglobin is formed. That it's drawn to. So, carbonic acid is formed um, when um, it combines with water. This process is ex ex um, expedited by an enzyme called carbonic um, anhydrase. Um, this is a hemoglobin um, to form um, Carbo, carbamino hemoglobin and the combination of um, carbon hydroxide with hemoglobin is a reversible reaction that involves low dose bond which allows transportation of the carbon dioxide from tissues 
to the lungs where it is released into the alveoli for exchange with the external environment. The release of the oxygen from hemoglobin in the tissue relates or enhances, sorry, enhances the binding of the carbon dioxide to hemoglobin in the lungs. The com combining of oxygen with hemoglobin displaces the carbon dioxide. This is determined by the acidic nature of the hemoglobin. Um, acidic hemoglobin has less nature of producing this. This is just to show you ventilation perfusion, just an example. So pulmonary and bronchial circulation. Pulmonary circulation has lower pressure than the systemic circulation. Pulmonary artery, pulmonary artery divides and enters the lung at the hilius, and each bronchius and bronchial has an accompanying artery and arterial. So the pulmonary system is storing blood while it is oxygen, oxygenating it. Um, it is providing with a dual blood system, the pulmonary and the bronchial circulation. Um, the pulmonary circulation arises from the pulmonary artery and provides for the gas exchange function of the lungs. Um, deoxygenated. Blood levels um, leaves the right heart through the pulmonary artery, which divides into a left pulmonary artery that enters the left lung and the right pulmonary artery um, that enters the right lung, returns return of the oxygen blood to the right to the heart occurs by way of the pulmonary arteries, which empties into the left atrium. The bronchial circulation distributes blood to the conducting airways and supports structures of the lung. The bronchial circulation has a secondary function of warming and humidifying incoming air. The bronchial arteries arise from the thoracic aorta and enter the lungs with the major bronchi moving out of in moving out into the lung supply, supplying them and other lung structures with oxygen. Capillaries and bronchial bronchial the capillaries of the bronchioles Hold on, I think I goofed you up, guys. So the bronchi moving out of the lungs, supplying them and other lung structures with oxygen. The capillaries of the bronchi which empties into the vena cava, the smaller of the bronchial veins empties into the pulmonary veins. This does um, not participate in gas exchange. As a result, this blood dilutes 
the oxygenated blood returning to the left side of the heart. Um, one third of blood vessels are filled with blood at any given time. So hypoxia causes pulmonary vasoconstriction. The response is unclear. AV are low, oxygen levels drop below 60 um, and low O2 levels. Blood is shunted to the other areas while oxygenated and it returns to normal when hypoxia is fixed. Um, alter um, aging in the pulmonary system. So we can decrease chest wall compliance, elasticity and recoil of the lungs, reduce um, ventilatory reserve, decrease surfactant areas for gas exchange as well as capillary perfusion, decrease exercise capacity and lung immunity. So alterations in the alveolar compartment and surfactant and um, increase in proliferatory cytokinase increase for risk of pulmonary disease and infection. So test the pulmonary function. Um, we can have spirometry, spirometry PFTs, PFTs tile volume, this is the amount of air inhaled or exhaled during normal breathing. We have the minute volume, which is the total amount of air exhaled upon minute. We have vial capacity. This is the tile volume of air that can be exhaled after inhalation as much as you can. Functional residual, residual capacity, that is the amount of air left after the lungs nor exhale normally. Residual volume, that is the amount of air left in the lungs after exhaling as much as you can. Total lung capacity, that is the total volume of the lung when filled as much air as possible. Um, we get arterial blood gases, which give us our gas numbers, and chest x-ray, which can show us infiltrates and such. Now we're going to talk chapter 27, alter alterations in pulmonary function. So we can have signs and symptoms of pulmonary disease, such as dyspnea, which can be sub subjective sensation of uncomfortable breathing, um, orthopenia, dyspnea when a person is lying down, paroxysmia, nocturnal dyspnea, coughing, it could be acute or chronic, um, abnormal sputum, that can be all different colors, hemoptysis which is blood, abnormal breathing patterns, which is Kuzmal breathing, change smokes, um, uh, hypoventilation, hypercapnemia, cyanosis, clubbing, and pain. So if we're going to talk about all those, dyspnea is a subjective experience of breathing discomfort that's compromised by quality, distinct sensations that vary in intensity. It can be um, transient or chronic. Um, orthopenia is dyspnea that occurs during heart failure when an individual um, lies um, platen, which causes the abdominal extension to exert pressure on the diaphragm and decreases the efficacy of the respiratory muscles. Pro Proximal nocturia dyspnea occurs when the individual with pulmonary or cardiac disease awake at night, gasping for air, and have to sit up and to relieve the dyspnea. Coffee is a protective reflex that helps to clear their ways by um, explosive expiration, acute cough is 
that resolves within two to three weeks um, of onset of illness and resolves with treatment of underlying condition, mainly due to upper respiratory infection. Chronic cough is defined as a cough that's persistent in individual individuals that do not smoke um, and have asthma. Abnormal sputum changes in the amount of color, consistency. Sputum provides um, that progression of the disease and efficacy of treatment. Hemoptysis is coughing up bloody or bloody secretions, usually in, indicates an infection. Abnormal breathing patterns, members breathe. Um, Asymmetric, an effortlessly small respirations, which they characteristically by a slight increase in ventilation, um, very largely tell volume and no expiration pause. Shane Stokes or Stokes. Okay, so we're going to talk about so we're going to talk about abnormal sputum, um, change in the abnormal color, consistency of sputum provided by information about progression of disease, effectiveness of disease. Um, so we talked about hemoptysis, hemoptysis. I'm going to spell it H E M O P T Y S I S. Hemoptysis. Sometimes you start to try to say it and you can't get it out. It's coughing up of blood or bloody um, secretions, usually will indicate an infection. Abnormally, abnormal um, pattern. Um, remember, breathing is autonomic and effortless. So with Kuzma's rep respirations, which are characterized by a slight increase in ventilation rate, very largely. So tidal volume and no expiration pause um, is what happens. And then they go into change strokes respirations, which are characterized by alterations in periods of deep and shallow breathing, apnea lasting from 15 to 60 seconds. Is followed by ventilation that is increases volume and peak flow. So volume is inadequate. A your alveolar ventilation is released. Metabolic demands with hypoventilation, CO2 released, does not keep up with CO2 production, PaCO2 increases, causing hypercapillemia. So conditions caused by pulmonary disease or injury. injury. Um, so we have hypoventilation of the alveolary, alveoli, caused by depression or respiratory center, by drugs, disease of mandula, um, abnormal or spinal conducting pathways, poliomyelitis, 
diseases of neuromuscular junction or respiratory muscles, thoracic cage abnormalities, um, large airway abnormality. Um, so hypoxemia can be caused by COPD, pulmonary emboli, respiratory failure, um, can result from direct injury to the lungs, airways, chest wall, or indirect because of diseases or injury involving another body system such as the brain, spinal cord, or heart. So hypercapnemia increases carbon dioxide concentration in the arterial blood, increases PCO2. Um, Hypocapnemia um, is usually PCO2 less than or greater than 50 mmHgs. Then you've got hypo Oxemia, reduction in oxygenation of the arterial blood. It's a decrease of PO2 less than 60 mmHgs. Um, you have decreased PO2, ventilation perfusion abnormalities. Um, you can have shunting. You can have cyanosis can result and refers to a bluish discoloration of the skin. Mucous membranes that result from excess concentration or reduction of deoxygenation of hemoglobin in the small blood vessels. You can have lips, nails, blood, ears, and cheeks all be cyanotic. And you can go into acute respiratory failure, which is defined as inadequate gas exchange. And you'll have a PaCO2 of less than 60 mmHgs, a P or a PaCO2 um, greater than or equal to 50 mmHg C's with a pH of less than 5 point, less than 7.25. So chest wall abnormalities or disorders. You can have chest wall restriction. There's chest wall um, deformities, immob immobilization, and or obesity. Um, so if the chest wall is deformed, traumatized, immobilized, or heavy from accumulation of fat, um, the work of the breathing increases in ventilation may be compromised um, because of a decrease in tidal volume. Um, if you have frail chest, instability of a portion of the chest wall um, can happen. So, frail chest results from the fraction um, of several con cons conservative um, ribs in, let me rephrase that, frail chest wall can happen from the fracture of several um, consecutive ribs in more than one place or fracture of the sternum or several consecutive ribs. Um, this results in instability of a portion of the chest wall causing um, paroxysmal movements of the chest with breathing. Sorry about the noise in the background, guys. It's just my family kind of being inconsiderate. Sorry. So pleural abnormalities is a pneumothorax. Um, there's different types of pneumothorax. So you, a pneumothorax is the presence of air or gas in the pleural space caused by a rupture of the visceral pleura, which surrounds the lungs or a partial pleura and chest wall. As air separates the visceral and the pleural space, it destroys the negative pressure of the pleural space and disrupts the equilibrium between the elastic recoil forces of the lungs and the chest wall. So a primary or sponta spontaneous um, pneumothorax occurs unexpectedly in healthy individuals, usually men between 20 and 40 years of age, and is caused by spontaneous rupture of blebs. 
a blister-like formation of the visceral pleura. This can happen during sleep, rest, or exercise. It is unknown what causes blood formation. There is a family history of pneumothorax in 10% um, in 10 and genetic from mutations of thalicylin genes. Secondary pneumothorax can be caused by chest trauma, such as a rib fracture or stab by a bullet wound. Um, Latrogenic pneumothorax is most commonly caused um, by transthoracic needle aspiration, which obviously is done by us. Primary and secondary um, pneumothorax can present as either open or tension. In open pneumothorax, air pressure in the pleural space equals barometric pressure because air that is drawn into the pleural space during inspiration through the damaged chest wall and the parietal pleura or through the lungs and damaged visceral pleura is forced back out during expiration. Um, intention pneumothorax, however, the site of the pleural rupture acts as a one-way valve permitting air to enter on inspiration but preventing its escape by closing during expiration as more and more air enter the pleural space. Um, air pressure in the pneumothorax begins to exceed barometric pressure. So, pleural effusion is the presence of fluid in the pleural space. The source of the fluid is usually from blood vessels or lymphatic, lymph lymphatic vessels lying beneath the pleural space. Vocationally, an abscess or other lesions may drain into the pleural space. Pleural fusion that enters the pleural space from intact blood vessels can transudative or watery or exudative, which is from high concentrations of white blood cells and plasma proteins. It has pus if it is um, in pyam empyema. If it has blood, it's emothorax. If it is chlorothorax, it has clay, which is a milky um, fluid contain lymph or fat droplets that move from lymphatic vessels into the pleural space. So restrictive lung disease are characterized by decreasing the length of lung tissue. It takes more effort to expand the lung tissue during inspiration. The individuals find it is harder to breathe. They complain of dyspnea and usually will have increased respiratory rate, decreased um, tidal volume, decreased um, PVCs, they, PVC, they will have a mismatch effect. So aspiration in the passage of the fluid and solid particles into the lung. Um, this will happen when someone has trouble swallowing or coughing. It can happen if they have severe reflux or if they have altered level of consciousness, substance abuse, sedation, and anesthesia or seizures, stroke or neuromuscular disorders if for, if Someone aspirates large fluid particles, gastric fluids, or a pH of less than 2.5 has serious consequences. Particles can obstruct the airway. Lung, the lung does not function in an acidic environment. So with atelectasis, it is the collapse of lung tissue 
um, compression of atelectasis is caused by um, external pressure um, exerted by tumor fluid or air in the pleural space or by abdominal distension pressing on a portion of the lung causing alveolite collapse. Absorption of atelectasis results from removal of air from obstruction or hypoventilation alveoli from inhalation of concentration of oxygen or um, anesthetic agents. Um, surfactant impairment results from a decreased production of inactivation of surfactant. which is necessary to produce surfactant tension in the alveoli and thus prevents lung collapse during expiration. In the alveoli, thus preventing lung collapse during expiration. This may be due to premature birth, um, acute respiratory distress syndrome, anesthesia, induction, or mechanical ventilation. Bronnie let Bronchiectolis is a per persistent abnormal dilation of the bronchi. This may be genetic, predisposed, or a detection in host defense. It occurs with atelectasis, aspiration of a foreign body infection, cystic fibrosis, or tuberculosis. Primary um, symptoms of bronchiectasis is a chronic productive cough, cough and may date back to a childhood illness or infection. Pulmonary edema is excess wear in the lungs, most common caused from left side heart disease. Left ventricular failure, filling pressures on the left side of the heart increases and causes a concomitant increase in pulmonary capillary um, diastolic pressure, hydrostolic pressure increases on ionic pressure and moves from the capillary into the interstitial space when the flow of the fluid out of the capillaries exceeds the lymphatic system. Um, ability to move it pulmon pulmonary edema develops. Another cause of capillary injury that increases capillary pulmonary, pulmonary ability is the cases of adult respiratory distress syndrome or inhalation of toxic gases such as ammonia. Chronic um, manifestations include dyspnea, um, hypoxemia, and increased work of breathing. On exam, there may be inspir inspiratory crackles and dullness to percussion over the lung bases. They may have pink frothy sputum and they may need mechanical ventilation. Acute lung injury, acute respiratory distress syndrome represents a spectrum of acute lung inflammation, diffuse um, alveolociliae injury, both Ally and ARDS are defined as the acute onset respiratory infiltrates on um, oxygen on chest radiography, um, a second low of parietal pressure of arterial um, oxygen to the fraction of inhaled oxygen under pressure, airway pressure, and is not derived from hydrostatic. So we get acute lung injury. Um, inhalation disorders can be toxic gases, pneumococcal, volume which one works, allergic diverticuli. So here, um, th this chart shows the pathogenesis of pulmonary edema. 
So obstructive um, lung disease is characterized by airway obstruction that is worse with expiration, more force required to expire a given volume of air, emptying of the lung is slow. Is slowed. Common signs and symptoms can be um, shortness of breath, dyspnea, and wheezing. Um, common disorders are asthma, COPD, emphysema, and chronic bronchitis. This is just the asthma algorithm for you. The common denominator under so asthma, the common denominator underlying all types of asthma is an exaggeration, exaggerated hypersensitivity response to a variety of stimuli. It suggested that the inflama inflammatory cells, neutrophils, eosinophils, lymphocytes, and mastils, as well as damage to the bronchi, bronchial epithelium contributes to exasperation. Patient search slow showed a role of the T lymphocytes in the pathogenesis, genetic and environmental factors. So this shows mechanisms of trapping COPD, mucus plugs of the narrowed airways caught um, trapping and hyperinflation of the alveoli of expiration. So chronic, hyper, chronic bronchitis is defined as hypersecretion of mucus and chronic productive cough for at least three months to years, usually in the winter months for at least 12 months a year. Um, chronic bronchitis is hypersecretion of mucus and chronic productive cough that lasts for three months of the year, at least two, inspiration of increased mucus plug and size of number of mucus cells. Um, mucus is thicker than normal and bronchial dilators, expirants, and chest x-ray therapy seem to treat. Um, so emphysema is going to lead to abnormal permanent enlargement of the gastric exchange airway, um, inherited deficiency of anti-antitrypsin, and loss of elastic recoil. So acute bronchitis, acute is an acute infection or inflammation of the airways or bronchi. Um, commonly follows a viral infection. Um, acute bronchitis causes symptoms um, similar to those of pneumonia, but does not demonstrate pulmonary consolidation or chest infiltrates. Pneumonia, um, we look for. Um, BRTBI, we look for, which you did not have. Low respiratory tract infections are caused by bacteria infections. So, go, as long as you're not allergic to anything. Um, or community-acquired pneumococcal. Most um, common and most lethal of the infections is viral which is acute bronchial and tummy affected, pneumococcal, and tuberculosis. So if we're going to talk about acute bronchitis, um, it's acute infection or inflammation of the airways or bronchi. Commonly follows a viral infection. It has um, symptoms similar to those of pneumonia, but does not demonstrate pulmonary consolidation or chest infiltrate.
So pneumonia, it's a little respiratory tract infection caused by bacteria, virus, fungi, and prozoa. Healthcare acquires it. Um, some community acquire it. Um, pneumococcal is the most common. Most common, my mom brought it to show us what we need to order and most lethal. Viral, it's secondary and usually self-limiting. So tuberculosis is an infection caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Um, it is an antifas, um bacillus that is usually affects the lungs but may invade other body systems. Tuberculosis is the leading cause of death from um, a curable infectious um, disease in the world. Um, it is actually increased greatly during the 1990s um, as a result mainly due to AIDS um, because it kind of that became something that allowed it to be um, able to invade again but we have seen a decrease since the 2000s um, before we used to see it due to overcrowding um, or institutional settings homelessness, substance abuse, those types of things. Um, TB is highly contagious. It's in, it is actually transmitted from person to person from air droplets. Um, it's, usually immu it's usually an immunized, comprom immunized compromised individuals. Um, is how it's transmitted, um, and usually you will see um, a positive tuberculi bacillus culture from sputum, and they will usually have um, a positive uh, TB test, which is, it's, it's diagnosed by a positive uh, tuberculine skin test or a purified protein derivative, PPD. Um, and then you'll have a sputum culture, immunoassay, and a chest x-ray. Um, but we do the skin test because it's an easy way to do it. Now, there are some people that used to have, um, were vaccinated with um, what was called a um, bacilli, bacilli calamente glearin, so BCG um, test, and they will have a positive TST even if they've never had TB. And so then there are ones that we're going to automatically want to do um, usually chest x-rays on. Usually they will um, be treated with a certain antibiotic um, and they could be on it from six months to a year um, to get them to clear. And when they're talking about this um, Cassanius necrosis, um, that's actually um, something that you're going to see. It's um, part of this um, when they're looking under the microscope for TB. Um, it's part of the TB granuloma. They will actually see this certain cell that's necrotic when they're looking at TB. So primary tuberculosis develops in previously unexposed, unsensitized persons, um, usually results of inhaling droplets containing tuberculobacillus, usually will go um, on to developing into latent TB. 
Um, secondary tuberculosis is a reinfection from inhaled droplet, nuclear reactivation of previously healed primary lesions. It usually occurs um, in situations of impaired body defense or mechanisms. Okay, so pulmonary disorder, pulmonary emboli. Pulmonary vascular disorders or pulmonary embolus um, is occlusion of the portion of the pulmonary vasculature is bed, um, bed by a thrombus embolus, tissue fragments, lipids, and or air bubble. Pulmonary emboli commonly arise from deep vein in the lower leg. Um, they may have this fish chow triad, which is venous stasis, coagulability, and injuries to the lower endothelial cells that line the vessels. Um, many times they will have um, a thrombus with infarct, thrombus without infarct, um, a massive occlusion, and or multiple pulmonary emboli. Um, sometimes they will have a sudden onset of pleuritic chest pain, dyspnea, tachypnea, tachycardia, unexplained anxiety. Some have frequency of fainting, um, coughing up blood, pleural fric um, friction rub, effusion, fever, and leukocytosis. Um, for evaluation treatment, a routine chest ray and pulmonary function tests are not definitive for this. Um, usually, arterial blood gases usually will demonstrate hypoxemia and hyperventilation, which is respiratory alkalosis. Um, diagnosis is usually measured by evaluating a D-dimer and in combination with a CT scan or MRI. This is just a nice outline for pulmonary emboli for you. So pulmonary um, hypertension is pulmonary vascular disorder. Um, for pulmonary hypertension is defined as a mean pulmonary artery pressure greater than 25 mmHg at rest. Um, pulmonary arterial hypertension is classified into several groups. There is no known cause or association with the inheritance, drug, or toxins, connective tissue, or infection. Okay. Um, there's pulmonary hypertension attributes to the left heart disease. There's pulmonary hypertension caused by chronic left lung disease or hypoxia, or both. There's chronic thrombo Bolytic pulmonary hypertension. There's pulmonary hypertension caused by other multifactorial mechanicalisms, including blood, metabolic, and systemic disorders. COPD is the most common lung disease associated with PAH. But any condition that causes chronic hypoxia can result in pulmonary hypertension. Um, so idiopathic pulmonary arterial hypertension, um, also called pulmonary hypertension, caused by unclear multifactorial mechanisms, is characterized by endothelial destruction with overproduction of vasoconstrictors, um, such as um, thromboxane and um, endothelium, and decreased production of vasodilators such as prostacycline and nitroxide. Um, vascular growth factors are released, causing fibrosis and thickening of the vessel walls, called remodeling, with luminal narrowing and abnormal vasoconstriction. These changes cause resistance to pulmonary artery blood flow, thus increasing the pressure in the pulmonary arteries and right ventricle. So gas exchange is reduced and restriction in lung volumes. As resistance and pressure increase, the workload of the right ventricular increases and subsequent right ventricular hypertrophy followed by failure may occur. Um, so um, then pulmonary hypertension is associated with also lung respiratory disease or hypoxia or both. Um, it can be a serious complication in many acute and chronic pulmonary disorders such as COPD and hypoventilation syndrome with obesity. 
um, usually it is, um, it may not be detected or it could be severe. Um, it could be picked up on a chest x-ray by an enlarged right heart border or an electrocardiogram will show right ventricular hypertrophy. It's usually manifested by um, fatigue, chest discomfort, tachypnea, and dyspnea. And it's usually with the exercise. Um, usually it has to be a definitive diagnosis with the right calf of the heart. And um, x-ray, echocardiograph, and um, CT. This is just its algorithm. So core pulmonal is another um, pulmonary disorder. Um, it usually will follow uh, pulmonary hypertension. Um, it is defined as right ventricular enlargement, hypertrophy, dilatation, or both, caused by pH. Um, it develops as pH exerts chronic pressure overload on the right ventricular or ventricle. And pressure overload increases the workload of the right ventricle and causes hypertrophy of the narrowing thin wall heart muscle. This eventually progresses to dilatation and failure of the right ventricle. So these people, these will have um, respiratory cardiac disease and appear only during um, exercise testing. The heart may appear normal at rest, but when you put them on exercise, cardiac output falls. Um, otherwise, it, his, uh, it's going to be based on physical exam, imaging, electrocardiography, um, echocardiography, or both. The goal of treatment is to decrease the workload of the right ventricle and lower the pulmonary artery pressure. So, malignancies of the lungs. Malignancies of the respiratory tract, um, there's obviously lung or um, bronchiogenic, is the most common cause. Um, well, first off, it's the leading cause of cancer um, deaths in the U.S. And uh, these malignancies are the most common cause is from cigarette smoking. Heavy smokers have a 20 times greater chance of developing lung cancer than non-smokers. Smoking is related to cancers of the larynx, oral cavity, um, esophagus, and urinary bladder. Um, environment, environmental or occupational risk factors are also associated. Um, it can arise from the epithelial cells lining the lungs and it's either identified as an SCLS or an NSCLC. Um, so it can be a, a non-small cell cancer, a squamous cell carcinoma, adenoid carcinoma, large cell carcinoma. Um, so if it's a non-cell lung carcinoma, that counts for 75 to 85% of all the lung cancers. Um, and then that's subdivided into squamous cell carcinoma, adenoid carcinoma, and large cell undifferentiated. Um, if it's small cell carcinoma, is the most common of the neuroendocrine tumors, and that accounts for 15 to 20 percent of all lung cancers. And many cancers that arise from other organs of the body metastasize the lungs. However, these are not considered lung cancers, and they're actually categorized by their primary um, site. But you can have non-small um, non cell lung cancer 
or squamous cell carcinoma, and that accounts for about 30% of the bronchiogenic carcinomas, and this is associated with smoking and COPD. And those are usually um, located by the hilia or the project or the project and project into the bronchi. There's adenocarcinoma, um, and those will arise from the glands of the lung, and they constitute for 35 to 40 percent of the bronchiogenic cancers. And then the large cell carcinomas, undifferentiated, um, constitute about 10 percent of the bronchiogenic carcinomas. Um, and these usually have transformed from epithelial cells that have lost all evidence of differentiation and are considered undifferentiated non-small cell carcinoma. And that's it. Enjoy your day.